Alright everybody, we're I think four days away from one of the copyright strikes uh, expiring. We're on pins and needles because I still have the other one which is over 70 days to go. So in the meantime, I guess I'll just make another Half Price Books physical media haul video. It'll be a short one. Had a nice day today. I walked in the park with my sister and her dog uh, when we did our mail run for the stuff we sell online. And I just had some chocolate cake and ice cream. My mother's birthday was two days ago. She reached a big milestone. Not going to give away too much personal information on that. But we had a lot of the family over. So it was a nice family reunion time. And uh, I just redid all my online sales inventory books. And I just paid my taxes uh, four or five days ago. So I'm caught up on a lot of work. And I'm getting a lot of work done. So it's great. It's a good time right now. The spring is coming. It's warm outside. Let's get on with it. So I'm in the middle and have been for several months of a project to replace most of my thick hardcover books with paperbacks. So let's say you got, I don't know, this is a Mencken book. You're not going to find a paperback of these. These have never been really reissued. But let's say we have a standard novel that's like this. I'm really looking for something like, you know, this size, a paperback. This is uh, Henry Miller's Nexus from the Plexus, Sexus, and Nexus series which I've never read, although I have read a couple other Henry Millers. Uh, <clears throat> so, you know, here's a Nabokov book. Uh, this is uh, Glory. So I used to have a hardcover that was more this thickness of that book, and I got rid of that and pared it down with this thinner version, which is what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to get rid of thicker books like this and pare them down to paperback size. Some things you can't replace, because like this Stories of Vladimir Nabokov, is always going to be in a thick hardcover. They, that's never been issued, as far as I know, in a paperback. So, uh, you know, here's Tom Robbins. All the Tom Robbins come in either hardcover or paperback. These are trade paperbacks. I don't think these were ever issued in smaller paperbacks like this. Although here's a Tom Robbins and a standard paperback. I don't know. Some are and some aren't. It depends on the item. Uh, the Marquis de Sade books are not going to be coming in tiny paperbacks because they're usually very thick compilations. But by and large, like with the standard old classics, let's say Dickens, which come in very thick hardcover editions, you can usually find thinner paperback editions of those. So it's a space issue that I'm trying to resolve. Anyway, so here's some things I picked up today. Here's uh, Ivan Turgenev's famous Russian novel, Fathers and Sons, Signet Classics. This is a more recent paperback edition. It's brand new, practically. It's in nice shape. I've already read this book. I used to have a hardcover that I ended up selling for a pretty good amount of money on eBay. And I did replace that with a paperback with an older Signet paperback that actually is worth money. So what I'm going to do is keep this one that really isn't worth but maybe a couple dollars and sell the other one which is worth anywhere from 10 to 15 dollars to the collector because that has more of a vintage cover that way i still have the book i would like to have this in my collection because it is a great novel i love this novel it crams a lot of ideas into like 200 pages it crams way more into 200 pages than tolstoy and dostoevsky managed to cram into like a thousand pages. I think Turgenev really gets a lot more stuff, especially about family, family relationships, you know, the generation gap. And, uh, you know, that book was the birth of, I guess, nihilism in literature and also of uh, the generation gap itself in a certain sense. 
but it really feels real like the dialogues in there between friends and between family is so real and so on point in that book in this book i should say uh yeah it's a great novel it's really the the best russian book i've read so far not that i've read that many but that's a great one it's one of my favorites actually this is L.E.V. Sells, uh, The Accident. I never see this one up there, and this was a dollar markdown. His books are always very short and always have a great impact. They're very simple, but always have that great heft to them, that emotional heft that, you know, all his Holocaust books have. So I had to get this for a dollar. It's not going to take up much room in the bookshelf. And I read part of it when I was standing there in the bookstore, and I thought, yeah, this looks pretty good. I think I could probably read that in a couple of hours or less. Um, George Eliot's The Mill on the Floss. A pretty thick paperback, but not as thick as some hardcovers, I think. Believe it or not, I have never owned this book. I've always had a copy of Silas Marner, of course, because that's the common one that even today, I guess, is still taught in some schools. But uh, this monster is supposed to be her masterpiece, so... Uh, I do have a PDF copy of this, but, you know, P reading a PDF on a screen is just not the same as holding a book. And uh, that's a welcome addition. Again, these were all $1. This was $1 as well. Got a Judy Garland, best of uh, Judy Garland. Not, this is not for me. I'm selling this because I had something on eBay with her that was not moving. And I'd sold previously all my other Judy Garlands on eBay. Those moved out, but the other one isn't for some reason, and I need to sweeten the pot for a buyer out there. So I bought this for a dollar. I'm going to lot this up. I do a duo lot with the other CD and, you know, maybe put them up both for $5.95 plus shipping. That way I can make back a few dollars. So I'm basically investing in selling a CD I already own and already have for sale. This is a pot sweetener. This is very best of Judy Garland. I don't know what very best means because she recorded quite a lot, but I mean, of course, Over the Rainbow is on there, but which recording of it, I have no idea. But okay, we got Chuck Mangione here from, uh, as you might know him from King of the Hill. But, uh, I remember when this album was out in the 70s, it has that big hit of his Feel So Good on it. Uh, believe it or not, I did not own this. I thought I had this already and I was going to sell this one. But I'm kind of like, well, I didn't have it. So I may have to keep this, I guess. It's on A&M Records. Uh, that's a very A&M sound. You know, that smooth horn, smooth jazz style that A&M was really good at. Chuck Mangione really fits into that mold. And we've got my friend Flicko with Roddy McDowell. One of the many horse movies from the 40s in color for kids and families alike. But anyway, so I, as it turns out, I own this already. So I'm going to sell this one. It's in pretty much mint condition. It was a dollar. So that's going to be it for today. And here we have Chuck Mangione with Feels So Good. One of the finest albums I've ever heard.